Once upon a time, there was a 12-year-old boy. This boy enjoyed going back to camp in the mountains every summer for the month of July. The camp that he went to had many different activities. You could do anything from lacrosse to rock climbing. The boy loved this camp and went back every summer. This summer, the boy's favorite activities were rock climbing, horseback riding, backpacking, and mountain biking. And it was his fourth year going back. He had made many friends over the years and had a great cat. In addition to many in-camp activities, the camp offered many out-of-camp trips that the boy loved to go on. Some types of out-of-camp trips included horseback riding, backpacking, kayaking, and mountain biking trips. These trips were the boy's favorite part of camp. This year, the mountain biking trips were his thing. Throughout the camp session, he had been developing into a pretty good biker and had been on many different mountain biking trips. As the camp session was winding down, a big mountain biking trip was going up. The trip was invitation only and was a three-day, 200-mile ride through the Pisgah National Forest in the Blue Ridge Mountains. The 200-mile, three-day ride was appropriately named the Death March. The Death March was a mountain biking trip for only the best riders of camp. The boy had never, never been very interested in the Death March because he was scared about such a little trip. He was sure there was no way he would be invited to go on any of these, so he never really thought twice about it. He had some good friends at camp who were excellent mountain bikers and had already been invited to go. Well, about a day before the trip was scheduled to leave, the boy was approached by a mountain biking counselor. Apparently, someone had dropped out of the trip and there was an extra spot, so the boy was invited to go. The boy didn't have much time to answer because the trip was going to leave the next day. Knowing how hard the trip usually was, the boy asked the counselor how hard the ride was going to be this year. The counselor told him about an 11 mile, 7 hour, all uphill section on one day and rocky hard terrain on the others. The total mileage for this year's death march was going to be 175 miles all by mile. These facts scared the boy. The boy thought about whether or not he should go on such a hard trip. At the last minute, he said he didn't want to go. He was too scared of the risk that he was taking, and he was afraid he wouldn't be able to keep up. He also decided that he would rather not return home from camp in a car. So the trip left him out. During the three days that the trip was gone, the boy really just did the normal activities at camp. Nothing new or exciting, all things he had already done before. When everybody got back from the death march, the boy heard from his friends that even though it was really hard, the trip was still very fun. His friends told him funny stories around the campfire and great trails that they had written. What his friends had told him made the boy wish he had gone on the trip. In the end, the boy regretted giving up the opportunity to go on a once in a lifetime experience. And now he would love to have the opportunity to go on the trip again. By the way, that boy was me. Now I still regret not taking the chance to go on the trip. The next year when I went back to camp, I wasn't invited back on the trip, even though I wish I could have had the chance again. I kept regretting that I had given up the chance to do something once in a lifetime. Now I will definitely never get the chance to do something that I did. I learned many lessons, both big and small, from my mistake in not taking the opportunity to go on the death march. For one, I learned not to be afraid of scary and sometimes even fake labels. My friends got back and told me that while the trip was hard, I could have completed it without any difficulties. Second of all, I learned that it can be hard to do something scary or something that she had never done before, but try it anyways. But I would say the biggest lesson that I learned is to take every chance you get, to make every day memorable, take chances, live life to the fullest, whatever you want to call it. By not taking the chance to go on the trip, I learned that if you don't live life to the fullest and you haven't really lived, I found out that if you do not take every opportunity you get, then really I don't think you're doing what God wants you to. I mean, if God didn't want you to take every opportunity, then he wouldn't have given you the opportunities in the first place. If he didn't want you to be yourself by doing something you love, which I think is another aspect of living life to the fullest, then I think God would have made you someone else. This probably isn't the first time that you have heard the saying, live life to the fullest. I've been told that many times, and have actually learned the lesson over and over again. I've even seen messages on the billboards that mean live life to the fullest. On Sunday, when I was driving home from a place near Reedsville with my dad, we passed by a huge billboard with a picture of 
picture of a big fish on Beside the fish, the letters that said, he's out there, why aren't you? To me, that was just saying, make the most of your day and go do something. Over spring break, I even saw a t-shirt emphasizing the lesson of live life to the fullest. On the front of the shirt, there was a picture of a rock climber, a parachutist, and a skater. On the back of the shirt, it said, you could fall off a cliff and die. Your parachute could not open and die. You could hit a tree sting and die. Or you could stay at home and fall off your couch and die. Again, I think that the shirt was saying, you do something and make every day count. Also, I think it was saying, don't waste your time, because you don't have very much of it. After all, we only live once, don't we? But if we are reminded to live life to the fullest almost every day, then why do we still not do it? Why do we still not take every chance we get? Why don't we show people who we really are? Why don't we strive to make every day memorable? I put the excuse that my show's coming on for reason why not to do something fun or something new. I, however, don't think that that and other excuses are the real reasons why we don't strive and live life to the fullest. Maybe it's because we are too afraid to be ourselves and do something we love doing. Or maybe it's because we are too scared of the risk that we are taking by doing something that we have never done before. Just a few days ago, I even passed the chance to go outside and play basketball. And instead, I stayed inside to play video games. We need to overcome whatever is holding us back from living life to the fullest. Because I think that if we live life to the fullest, we can become who God really wanted us to be. We can show who we really are and not just the person who we pretend to be. So next time you walk by a tree, climb it. If you want to be in the school play, try out for it. If it's singing that you love, then sing. Do something you love every chance that you get. If you love dancing, dance. When you get the chance, take it. If you get an opportunity to do something that you've never done before, try it, even if it seems scary. If you see a cave, explore it. Tell someone you love them. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Have fun as much as you can and make the most of every day. If we live our lives to the fullest, not think that we can become who God truly wants us to be. Amen.